Anastasia, what's your favorite movie? Um, it's Frozen. Yeah, you yeah. like Frozen. What, what's your favorite part of Frozen? Um, when when Elsa goes away. Yeah. Oh, why that? <laughs> yeah. You like Anna better? No. <laughs> no. Nobody likes Anna. <laughs> Awesome. What, 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 we, what, what do we, we watch, watch this weekend? Um, Star Wars. Star Wars? Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to go see with me around Christmas time? Um, Star Wars. There we go. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's <Ray's> awesome. right. <laughs> in podcast world and welcome back to the front row movie reviews podcast the podcast for people who actually like movies and this is a very special episode of front row flashbacks and we are doing it on the entire back to the future trilogy and we're going to get you out of here in an hour i guarantee it um, <laughs> i am uh, your editor-in-chief jeremy geckner as always and also in the room with me mr scott mcfarland still sour over those two cubby losses but you know we still have some games and i have to tell you <laughs> Darth Vader came down from the planet Vulcan last night and told me if I don't review these movies, that he'll melt my brain. So I'm here. That was a pretty epic open. Um, and trying to top that is also, as always, Mr. Craig McFarlane. Craig, what's up? Hello, everyone. So now we've got Great Scott and yes. not, so, not so Great Scott. But <laughs> That was pretty good. Yeah, I'm one in the Googleplex. There you go. I'm going to throw quotes all night. 1.21 <laughs> gigawatts worth of quotes. Um, now, guys, awesome. Thank you for being here, of course. Uh, and, of course, thank Wouldn't you, listen. everybody, for being here and listening. Um, the, the stuff has been going great. We are expanding our social media reach. I know we just got on Instagram. Um, what's our what's our tag there? The Front Row Movie Reviews. The Front Row Movie Reviews. So Search for check them. us out on yeah. uh, Instagram. Also, make sure to subscribe on iTunes. I mean, that's really the only way um, that we can get uh, continue to get the podcast growing. And thank you so much for the support. It's been pretty awesome. And uh, on Twitter, uh, we are at Front Row. <laughs> front Row Reviews views. with a Z. Uh, <laughs> somebody be real cool. Wow. Somebody <laughs> already had Front Row Reviews. But, and every uh, other <laughs> iteration <laughs> thereof. <laughs> But that one's been around. That Twitter uh, account has been around since the first blog back in like 2012. Ah. So, uh, yeah, it's 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 been around for a while. But we are trying to reclaim it. We are trying to continue to bring. We're going to bring uh, back the Z. Exactly. We're going to make that a thing. <laughs> we're we're going to bring back the Z. Hashtag we're, bring back the Z. Hashtag bring back the Z. <laughs> <laughs> but also, uh, so yeah, uh, look for us there on Twitter and on Instagram. Um, we are. Uh, I, I know I've said it before, but we're literally about maybe nine days away from getting the web website live um i'm hard at work on on recreating the pages and everything and we are very very close um of course that is going to be announced there on facebook and twitter and everywhere uh, once we are ready to launch um speaking of launching um craig what are we drinking tonight we went back with the uh, nitro ipa by guinness it's so good it, it is just, so delicious it just tastes so good when it when it touches your lips so <laughs> i would Makes you uh, want to go streaking. absolutely go out there and get some because who knows how long this will be around yeah um, since it's a project it's, it's, it's probably it brewed in south good. africa yeah so, probably <laughs> probably it's a, it actually a probably of is. ireland but it says uh it was imported in mm -hmm. norfolk norwalk connecticut wow. <laughs> um I, it does say ireland i'll give him that i have a hard time reading gold on white sorry <laughs> yeah it is very uh, it's a classic looking it is very hard. but seriously guys nitro ipa guinness uh i'm not even the biggest ipa fan but this stuff is delicious i'm um, absolutely not an ipa fan so i'll would, stick with the regular do you want guess. to try it right now on the podcast uh, here we here go here we go let's try it He's got his pinky up and everything while yeah. he's drinking it. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm not a fan of IPAs. So I'll, <laughs> I'll stick with the real Guinness. That's Thanks. got a smoother finish than other IPAs. I it mean, does. It's not as bitter, but it still has the taste of ass. So, <laughs> so anyway, go on <laughs> anyway. and like us on Facebook. Uh, tweet at us at Front Row Reviews. And also uh, go check us out on Instagram, The Front Row Movie Reviews. And, and tell your friends to listen as yeah. well. We would appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate all the support we've been getting. It's pretty incredible. And Very outside much of that, so. uh, we got to go back to the future. Do we do? And as, as Huey Lewis says in the movie, time. Time. 
time. Uh, all right, so guys, uh, this is uh, going to be a little different than our normal uh, front row flashbacks. We're not going to spend as much time on plot in this one because, by quite frankly, if you don't know the plot of Back to the Future <laughs> 1, 2, and 3, I, I just feel really sad for you because you have missed out on some crazy awesome movies, man. Uh, so we're going to just talk a lot more about overall impressions of the movie, cultural... Uh, cultural uh, what, what am I trying to say here? Uh, significance. Significance, implications. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank All you above. both. All of the above. All right, so uh, let's jump right into uh, Back to the Future Part 1. I, it wasn't called Part 1, was it? It was just Back to the Future. Mm-hmm. Uh, it came out in 1985, uh, produced by Steven Spielberg, directed by Robert Zemeckis, uh, of course, starring Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd and Crispin Glover and Leah Thompson, among, among many others. Who, who played Biff? I can't ever remember his name. Thomas Wilson. Thomas F. F. Wilson. Wilson. Look at that. Scott for the win. Whoa. <laughs> Scott actually movies. knew one he of those, man. He just challenged Mr. You IMDb guys, himself. Dude. And by the way, you mentioned all those. You did not mention Eric Stoltz. I did not mention oh. Eric Stoltz. Of course. Well, explain why, why we didn't mention Eric Stoltz. Oh, poor Eric Stoltz. <laughs> okay, well, uh, Marty McFly was always supposed to be Michael J. Fox, but he had um, some... Uh, Contractual issues with family ties that he couldn't get away, so mm-hmm. they hired Eric Stoltz. From what I can tell, and there's some deleted scenes out there too. Eric Stoltz um, was not Marty; he was more no. of emo '80s no, kid. They do; they are online somewhere. The yeah. like the scenes that he shot before they went back to Michael they all, J. Fox. From what I can tell, they've shot they shot most of the movie with yeah. Eric Stoltz, and then they realized this isn't working. And <laughs> luckily, Family Ties was done filming for the year, so Michael got flown out. And we are and all the, rest the is better history. for it. <laughs> Absolutely, Eric I mean, Stoltz is not the could better. Could you for even imagine not. Marty McFly at, w- without Michael J. Fox? I mean, nope. The, the I don't think you have a Back to the Future two and three. No, I don't think you do. Absolutely not. I there's mean, just a, there's just something about Michael J. Fox in this role specifically. It's just it just fits, you know. Like when you think of Michael J. Fox, you think of Marty McFly. Now, and it's not because, and it's not really just because of like oh uh, a situation with like a superhero or something, you know, like where you're like oh that person is this. It's just like it was just a perfect blending of his acting style and his like charm mixed with this character who you know is a little down on his luck with his family and stuff where. We we meet him in the first movie, but he's constantly trying to get better, try, trying to make life better, you know? Mm-hmm. And he's just, you know... He just wants to be a rock band, man. Well, does, what's, man. what's interesting about it, I, I have not watched that much Family Ties, but when you look at Alex P. Keaton <laughs> in that show, yeah. I mean, it, it, they couldn't be further apart. No. Um, and so it kind of showed his range as an actor, because you might think that he'd come in as sort of this stiff... I mean, he's playing this basically this stiff, conservative kid uh, who wants to be like a financial expert, or, or whatever yeah. the case may be. Maybe. And then he comes in and he's your perfect rendition of an 80s teenager. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's really what he comes off of uh, in Back to the Future is that he is the perfect kid to go on this adventure with. Oh, yeah. And uh, his persona is built by the fact that he's so charming and that uh, his interactions with these people in the first movie, they are all, you know, 30 years before him. Yeah. And then in the second movie, when there's 30 years beyond him, um, you can really see that charm come out in, in this, the references that he makes and, uh, you know, obviously going way into the movie, but when we get into the, uh, or talk about the, the dance, his interaction oh, yeah. with the band there is incredible. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, like, and it's, we should uh, mention here that, of course, in this first movie, uh, his girlfriend, Jennifer Parker, is played by, uh, it looks like, uh, Claudia Wells. Um, and this is the only time that she plays Jennifer. Of course, she's replaced by uh, Elizabeth Shue, I believe, in the uh, second one, right? And, um, and that's... It, it's a, it, I just say that because... You know, Marty McFly is the character. It's he's got a really, really you know, smoking hot girlfriend. He plays guitar like a beast. Um, you know, he skateboards all over the place, hanging off the back of trucks, and he's got this old inventor, crazy scientist friend, Doc Brown. I mean, like this kid's life. I mean, I would have loved to have been this kid's life when I was in high school. Like, that sounds cool as hell. And, of course, you know... Everywhere he goes, Huey Lewis in the news is just playing. The, the narrating? They're, yes, I mean... <laughs> that's a superpower in itself. I want to have the ability to have background music when I walk into the room. I wanted to be able to skateboard so bad. I, I couldn't even learn how to ride a bike until I was 13. Oh. I wanted to skateboard, though, um, and just so I could skateboard to Power of Love. Like, all day long, I wanted, well, to, grab on, I wanted to grab onto the back of trucks. <laughs> I mean... 
I saw this kid when he was that age. That would have been a sight, by the way. I was more of an Alex P. Keaton than a Marty McFly when I was a kid. I would have preferred, you know, a little hip to be square to be narrating me personally. But that's my that's my Huey Lewis song. But it's okay. It's all we want a new drug anyway. Yeah, that's right. But you know, well, you mentioned like it's the movie is so great in the ten. Let's give some overall impressions of the film because you know, for me personally, this film is one of those that, like, it, it's made in 85, it has a distinct 80s feel and look to it, but it still doesn't feel dated when you watch it at all. And I don't know, maybe, I it's, maybe it's because it, it's already kind of a historical piece because they spent so much time in the 1950s in this film, but it, it just feels right, you know? It, feel, it feels like it all works together so well, and it doesn't... I don't watch that and think, oh man, I'm watching an uber 80s film like when I watch like Labyrinth or something like that, you know? Like, there's, there's sensibilities there that exist, but it just it all works together so seamlessly. I think. Yeah, and what I meant by the the quintessential '80s kid is the the style and the the lingo that he uses and the skateboarding. I mean, everything like that. But no, I, I completely agree that this is a com- this is a very relevant movie. Now, uh, when we get into the second movie, <laughs> yes. and we're we're releasing <laughs> this on the day that the second movie exactly uh, exists, <laughs> and uh, obviously we'll get into the differences and kind of what's been going on with that and. and all the things that we do have that don't Back to the Future did predict, because a lot of people haven't been focusing on that. But no. <laughs> I do agree that all of these uh, really fit in well together. Mm-hmm. And don't forget my favorite part of the films, 1885. 1885. You like Back to the Future 3. Huh? I like 3. That's my favorite. It's amazing. That's people, your favorite. A lot of we'll people, have to that's discuss. the black sheep of this we'll trilogy. Oh, I, I would incredible. argue Back to the Future 2 is the black sheep, sir. Wow, look at that. Okay. Mm. But you we'll know, have like, to discuss. <laughs> But, you know, let's, well, let's talk about the cast a little bit of the first one here. Um, obviously, we talked about Michael J. Fox a lot, but, you know, this is... Actually, I kind of think that this is Christopher Lloyd's defining role of his career. Completely agree. Um, it, it, it's not... There's there's a lot of Christopher Lloyd-isms that he puts into Doc Brown, you know, like just the way that he speaks and, like, shouts certain lines and everything. But the character itself is very enjoyable, I think. You see, know? I will always remember him as Krug the Klingon, but that's just... <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. I can see that. Much, Professor no. Plum from Clue. Um, <laughs> the the Highlander. Dude, I'm just saying. <laughs> that was a deep cut, huh? It was a deep cut. just blew Scott's mind. Way, way too deep. Way <laughs> too deep. <laughs> Highlander 2, man. I can do Star Trek 3, but you're bringing out the Highlander 2. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's, it's interesting that like this, this movie starts out so weirdly, you know? Like with, with the... You Are know, they the, Iranians the, or the, what, what? Yeah, the terrorists. Uh, Libyans. 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 Which Libyans. actually goes well with... <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's why it's timeless. <laughs> you know, like, it, it's so weird. There's this plot, like, Doc Brown dies, we get all this stuff, like, uh, in the present day, and... You know, when we go back in time and then all the stuff, like 1.21 gigawatts. It's just, it's interesting, like, the cast, the way they work together. And, of course, it's back in the 1950s we get uh, Leah Thompson and Crispin Glover as his parents, Lorraine and uh, George. Which they played them in the 85 scenes, too, with a lot of makeup. Yes, with a, makeup. a ton of makeup. And, you know, it's, it, it's fun that, uh, you know, we get to see this stuff. Because I think, honestly, with the charm of Back to the Future, the big the big thing that really sets it apart as a film is that... His like the interactions he has to have with his mother, who has a crush on him, is just. Emperor it, it, ain't got nothing on Marty McFly. I'm just saying, like the, the stuff that's there, it's just like cringeworthy when you look at it. But it works so comedically well because, uh, and I honestly think it's Leah Thompson that does most of the heavy lifting mm-hmm. here because she's she's just kind of like dry and just the right amount, you know. Because like I, I'm sorry, but you laugh out loud every time she's just like, "What, Calvin? Like, why do you keep calling me that? That's what it says on your underwear, yeah. Calvin Klein, you know." Written on the inside of your underwear. Exactly. Just saying. Oh. That goes a little deeper than even you want to know. Well, you know, I, I, I do think it's because she she doesn't do it in a creepy way. She does it in a very naive way. Yeah. So you're not like sitting there the whole time thinking like, oh man, oh, oh, really? Gross. No, but it, yeah, you're right. It's not done. It's not none of the lines, none of the way it's delivered. It's all delivered in kind of a. Oh God! Kind well, of way, not a. Uh, way, and one of the know? best examples of that is when they're in the car at the dance, and Marty becomes kind of the mom figure in that. Like yep. she starts smoking and drinking. He's like, "You drink too." I... That yeah. was that was pretty good. I mean, when he's like the son is teaching the mother, and she has no clue. Oh at yeah, all. Uh, yeah. But you know, like that that whole thing, like at the dance with them in the car. You're right. Like the, the creepiness is not really there. It's literally just more of a like even when they kiss, you're not thinking like. 
oh my god, that is the grossest thing. Mm. You're just thinking like, oh, that's awkward. You yeah, know? exactly. And of course, it comes I love awkward more than it does. Yeah, creepy, and which I is love good. her reaction to it too. It's not, and it's not even a. It's literally, it makes sense because if that situation were to really happen, which it can't, of course. Uh, or can it? You're but, not thinking fourth dimensionally. Exactly. But. I, I got these coming out my butt. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like that's, you know, but her reaction is just so mean. It's just like, oh, that feels wrong, you know, something uh-huh. like that. Um, you know, and of course, that's where we get the great moment for George McFly. Let's talk about Crispin Glover a little bit in this first movie. He doesn't know. want you to. No, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> he does not want of you talking course, about this. famously movie. kind of feuded with this about uh, part two and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, Crispin Glover is like the perfect nerd part. I at agree. this point in I mean, his career. He, he looks like he comes across as like Buddy Holly in this uh, in this movie, which is mm-hmm. fantastic. And um, that moment in the car where he gets to when he gets to show his manly manliness, <laughs> yeah. you know, it really does come off as like you want to root for this guy. And it's it's a great scene. Yeah, and I do love it even more when he's just like, "Hey, you take your hands off her." It's like just hey, he, you he just can't do it at all. Your and everything. Hands off but you know, his arc in the film is really kind of the the, the crux of what mm-hmm. Marty's story is too trying to make sure his parents get together so that he doesn't fade out of existence and you know like we get so many of those great in jokes like you said at the beginning you know like I am Darth Vader <laughs> you have to wearing a radiation suit yeah, with the blow dryer <laughs> oh man it's just so great and everything and of course you know George finds his confidence and it's of course that that leads to the better life in the future uh, you know or back in Marty's presence of course and you know that's the thing is like Crispin Glover plays a nerd kind of dork character so well and then when they fast forward and he's you know rich and famous and he he doesn't look like that anymore even with some more of the makeup you know it's amazing that they were able to transition him in like that I think Mm -hmm. Um, of course you mentioned it earlier let's talk about uh, Thomas F. Wilson Biff this guy this guy is so great in all three of these films and he hardly gets any of the the real accolades for it but literally I'd say he next to Doc and Marty is the most important character in these films he's the biggest supporting character and uh, he carries most of Back to the Future 2, which I love, because not only is it the the future Biff who's like, you know, down in his luck, but then all of a sudden he's yeah. got all the money and everything uh, after he gets the, the sports almanac. Mm-hmm. But also, like, going back in those scenes, um, I know that this is talking more about the second one, but going back in those scenes back in the 50s, it's cool to see his range, because, I mean, he went from, like, this essentially uh, decrepit old man to this Donald <laughs> Trump-like figure, yeah. and then back to his character from the first back movie. Back to his teenage Biff. And how many actors can pull that off in one franchise? Let's, let's, let's count them off here. He was 85... Uh, Asshole Biff, uh-huh. and, and then he, don't forget the first one. He was like what, like fifty year old, well, you know, like washing Mar- well, I mean, washing George McFly's car. That's Biff. the second one though. Yeah. In the first part, you know, I say eighty five. I mean nineteen eighty five. So we start the movie with Asshole Biff, who's uh-huh. uh, who's um, Marty's dad's boss, uh-huh. and then we have fifty five Biff. And then we have 85 version 2 Biff, which is washing car and being, you know, yep. basically you know, the guy who does all the services for him. Yeah. And then we have 2015 Biff. <laughs> and then we have 1955 Biff. Part and 2. Part 2. <laughs> and then we have 1985 Donald Trump Biff. Yes. And then we have 1885 Mad Dog Tannen. Mad Dog Tannen Biff. And you're right. Like, just, like that slew of characters. And the fact is... All of them are distinct. Mm -hmm. All of them have distinct personalities and come across as completely different. You can see the thread. Mm -hmm. You can see how Biff in 1955 could turn into any one of these people. He's still got Billy Zane by his side. Exactly. (laughs) You know, I think... (laughs) By the way, my favorite cameo in this entire trilogy, Billy Zane just is one of the henchmen in number two. (laughs) I think that uh, we've created our second hashtag for this episode, which is Donald Trump Biff. (laughs) 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 Some post about that. We will Seriously. definitely have a side by side picture. <laughs> no, but you're oh, right. Oh, God. Yes. You go. I think it would yes. work, man. I approve. <laughs> Vote Biff Tannen for we president. We just have a meme here, kids. Here yes, we go. Here we go. But no, you're right. Like, and Thomas F. Wilson, like, you're right. You said, like, he doesn't really, he gave an interview where he's, you know, yeah, doesn't I, really I, talk to these I, people I, anymore. I don't remember the source. It may have been one of the first, very first Nerdist interviews. So we're talking almost a decade ago now, but back when Chris Hardwick was. 
just a wee little yeah. lad. Wee little no, lad. Not, not moderating panels or anything. No, not so much. No. Not talking the dead. No. no but as it were. He, has a really, he has a really fun story, him being Thomas F. Wilson, about how they got back for one of the anniversaries, and no one really knew even who he was. So he wasn't talking to Michael Didn't J. Didn't he Fox look like or... his older self? Yeah, he <laughs> <laughs> probably did look just like... No, probably not but quite. It, it is very... Was... Based on his acting difference. skills, it's very disappointing that he's the one who didn't make it. Yeah. You know, even Elizabeth Shue made it more than he did. That's true. That's very true. And, you know, like, just the range that he shows, you're right, like, we're gonna we're about to get into the second movie where we're going to talk a lot more about him. But um, in terms of this, this first movie here, um, obviously, I don't think there's a much better feel-good moment when you see George finally punch his lights out. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you he, he, find, he hurts Lorraine, and you just see it change in his face, and it's just like... Oh, you know, like I'm going to literally punch this guy out. And then, of course, we get the rest of the dance and everything works out well for them. But then Marty goes back to the future. We finally get all those iconic scenes of Doc with the with the lightning storm and the DeLorean and downtown. Mm-hmm. And, of course, that uh, light, that town hall looks a lot like the town hall in Lincoln, Illinois. I'm just saying. Um, but <laughs> they have a back just completely Lincoln, skip the Johnny insane. Be Good scene. I mean, that, no, no, no. That's, that's absolutely a, the that's best scene in the movie. That's what I was going to say movie. because that's, uh, we're going to transition into the, our favorite scenes thing here in it's in your a cousin, second. Melvin Barry. <laughs> Melvin Barry. <laughs> but you know, like the, the those scenes, like, and, and they build the tension of the end where they're actually trying to get the DeLorean mm-hmm. up to speed and all that. They build that tension really, really well mm-hmm. at the end. Uh, you know, because you 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 get a sense that it's going to work out, but like just having to reconnect the wire, like having to swing all the way down from well, the top of Town Hall. It's really it's really great action directing by Zemeckis right there. Really great. And I don't know if that's what they were going for, but it's almost like fate's trying to stop him. The DeLorean won't start. Uh-huh. The wires get broken. Um, the the clock tower basically falls apart underneath Doc's feet. Which, by the way, this is another thing I love about these movies is there's so many connections from one to the other. Obviously, oh, they, yeah. they didn't plan on two and three after by one, but with two and three they filmed them together. Yeah. So like when you watch the 2015 scenes, yes, October 21st, 2015, <laughs> there's still a big old piece of brick missing from the from clock the, tower. From the, yeah, Doc yeah. Knocked it off in great. 1955. I didn't even notice that. That's watch fantastic. That. It's, it's just little stuff like that all over the place. That's so cool. So, oh, yeah. so I, obviously I was negative one year old when yes. this movie came out. So uh, And I know that you were only two years old, yes. so you don't know this either, maybe. But um, did it not say to be continued at the end of the not movie? Not when it originally when came out. Not when it was originally. Oh, okay. we, we, okay. we have an episode four issue here. Yeah, yeah. This is when, when it was released in theaters, no, there was none of that. But then, of course, once we started getting on home video and DVD, once they started planning those, I then understand. it started kind of coming it was a in. So it wasn't gap. like Guardians, where at the end of Guardians it said, the Guardians of the Galaxy yes. will return. No, it was not it something was like that. that. Of course, on part two it was. Yeah, and Zeme- sure. Zemeckis is even quoted somewhere saying that it was all an end joke. There was no Never plans for a Back to the Future 2. Um, for one, it took him 40 script rewrites to get that one approved. So imagine trying to do another one. But um, yeah, then yeah. But once you make money, all, there's a, there's a little bit. All of a sudden, the you, doors open. Universal <laughs> get a little looser. Universal's like that Dracula money dried up 30 years ago, <laughs> so we gotta do something. Um, That's true. But there was a four-year gap there, and in that four-year gap, I think in the VHS release. Is when we start seeing this to okay, be continued. That makes sense. And then obviously, again, two and three were filmed back to back, so you knew yeah. what was going to happen. It was eighty nine and ninety. Yeah. Well, I gotta, con- I gotta really take uh, some. I, I, I gotta argue with you because Uh-oh. part two is the quintessential Back to the Future. Uh-oh. Because Uh-oh. not only do you, get, you look at ratings, no, it's not. No, okay. but not only do you get not only do you get the the historical 1955, and you also get a little bit of 1985, mm-hmm. and you get 2015 as well. And it, it's a fantastic. Definitely spans well, the most time. It, it spans 60 years. Mm-hmm. And how does it get there? The best ending line in any movie. In the history of movies. True, but which was actually in part yep. one. I know, that's what I'm saying. The yes. best ending yes. line in any movie, which is... Where we're, we're going, going, we, we don't, don't need roads. <laughs> <laughs> it so is good. a great line. Two so minutes good. of trivia before we go to our favorite scenes. One on IMDb here says the script was actually rejected 40 times before it was finally greenlit. Wow. One right there. And second, it said that the Universal Pictures head Sid uh, Scheinberg said that nobody would go see a movie with future in the title. <laughs> so he went and said that you should call this movie Spaceman from Pluto. 
Is that a thing? <laughs> I don't know, it's but apparently it was referenced to when Marty McFly is there. Um, it said that uh, it said it took Pluto. Steven Spielberg actually writing a letter to Sid Sheinberg saying, I'm gonna sh- "No, you really need to let us do this." Gentlemen, this is why I'm really excited that we're finally doing movies from the '80s because I know way too much shit. Okay. Spaceman from Pluto was the comic book the kid was ha- had in the barn when the DeLorean flew through the barn as he first entered 1955. That's where he got the idea of putting on the Darth Vader costume. Mm-hmm. I do quotation marks in the air. <laughs> because the you idea. could see that in a podcast. Yes, that's why I had to tell you. Scott. Scott's really great about those visuals in <laughs> podcasts. We need video. Scott's um, got the face for podcasts. I, I, yeah, I don't think I'm like <laughs> exaggerating when I say we are the quintessential visual podcast. Um, so, <laughs> So, as I was saying, so the the comic was Spaceman from Pluto, and it had a picture, and it looked like the radiation suit. Yes. Therefore, Marty uses that idea to help. There's so many connections. There are so many connections. I mean, freaking the mall. Okay, I'm just going geeky out here, but the mall is Twin Pines Mall at the beginning of the movie. Mm-hmm. Marty knocks over a pine tree when he gets back to 1955. At the end of the movie, it's the Lone Pine it's Mall. It's the Lone Pine Mall. <laughs> I do like, like that. I did notice that <laughs> All one. Of that, you're like right, that. and that, that's just a lot of great continuity. <laughs> that's just people taking time and care with the script. I also, like these just, movies. So just reading the line here, too, it says that uh, to get them to keep the title, uh, Steven Spiel Spielberg sent Scheinberg a letter that said, hey, that joke memo you sent was great. We all got a kick out of it. And apparently Scheinberg was too proud to admit that it was real, and he just let them keep the title. Hi, remember me? I made Jaws. Yeah, Shut up. Exactly. <laughs> all right, well, let's get into it. What, what's our favorite, what's everyone's favorite scene from the first one? Johnny B. Good. Uh, it's got to be that. Mine, I mean, when, <laughs> when, well, when you just say, just just follow me. What, what is it? What's the exact wording? I, 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 can't I, can't, the I don't know the exact But, but you all something. know it. You're it's all Something yelling at your like, podcast yeah, exactly. right now. It's something just like it. it's a jazz riff and B. Watch me for the changes and right. keep the keep the ride hot or something like that. Um, but you're right. But it's that just was like, close. I'm really impressed by that. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it, it makes a lot of sense. And like the scene is just you're right because it has the greatest ending of that scene where he's just going nuts. He's doing his rock star thing, and then finally he looks at everyone and says. <laughs> He looks at every everyone and says, as they're all just staring at him, not knowing what to do, he says, well, I guess you guys aren't ready for that yet, but your kids are going to love it. <laughs> your kids are going to love it. <laughs> but it's so great. And, of course, we get the great tie in there of, uh, you know, Marvin Berry, Chuck Berry's, what, nephew is it? Cousin. 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 He's like, oh, remember that sound you look for? Listen to this. And he goes, oh, Chuck Berry gets Johnny B. Good. It's, uh, I, I agree with you. Like, watching him play that, I mean, he's obviously voice dub singing. Uh, that is not Michael J. Fox. I mean, I guess voice. I would expand it to the whole dance because that dance is like, I mean, I want to go to that dance. You know what I mean? Like, that uh-huh. just seems like so much fun in the under, under the sea. Like, so oh, much yeah. so that, you know, when uh, I helped plan a adult prom, we made it under the sea themed, you know, because <laughs> I just love that whole scene um, throughout. Yeah, no, it's it, it's definitely my favorite scene. Scott, what do you think is uh, your favorite scene of the movie? Oh, man. Well, <clears throat> I think it's, um, for me, it actually is the end of the movie, just because I don't know if it's because I watched it so much on beta, beta max, <laughs> yes. Uh, Going away. But back. just as we already kind of talked about it, where. Uh, Marty gets back. Everything's fine. He's got the big ass monster truck in the garage. Yep, He's ready yep. to go out for the weekend. And uh, Doc just shows up with his Mister Fusion and says, uh, "We mm-hmm. have to go save your kids." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. And you know, the, the thing about that scene that's so great is that you're right. Like, it is a great ending because it doesn't have to have a sequel. I don't think. I think like that scene. If you just left that, if Back to the Future was the only one of these movies we got, and that was the last scene, it would be perfect. But it, would it be a leaves perfect you. Ending. It leaves you wanting a sequel. I mean, it leaves you... Like, there would be... In today's age, there would be so many change.org petitions mm-hmm. about having a sequel. It would go to the level of like submitting that petition to the White House that the president has to give <laughs> the, an actual response to why this movie doesn't it's have like a sequel. It's like the 20th that NRA kind of petition on change.org. Um, exactly. Like, <laughs> that, that is why uh, it's such a perfect ending to it. Because then you're like, oh, oh my god, the... the it's flying. It's flying. Damn it's flying. <laughs> like, yeah, and it's like, and okay, well, let's transition it there into uh, into uh, part two. I agree with you, Craig. I think this is probably my favorite of the three. Um, and like I said, I think it's just because the story is a lot more epic in terms of how we're going back, we're going forward, we're going all over the place, you know. And I, I think that part two. 
you know, when you get into all the retconning that you kind of have with with the rest of that story, because you're right, Biff is really the main character of part two. Um, you know, Marty and Doc are there; they're doing their thing. Of course, we seamlessly work Leah Thompson or Elizabeth Shue into the uh, into the Jennifer role without explaining it at all. Um, but, then we you knock know, her out, so it doesn't. Yeah, matter. exactly. Then we knock her out, so she doesn't do anything. Twice. The whole film. Yeah, twice. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like going into the future was great, and of course, the big reason we're releasing this podcast today is because, of course, they go to the day. October 21st, 2015. I'm still waiting for those flying cars. And well, they- you know what, though? i got to <laughs> stop you there because um, reading all this stuff, everybody's talking about the things that we don't have. You know, uh, we, we pseudo have a hoverboard. Uh, Nike is trying to release some self-lacing shoes. Pepsi Perfect is going to sell to, like, 6,000 people, which, by the way, Pepsi... Good marketing ploy, but I want my Pepsi Perfect Exactly. As well. Why aren't you so, doing this nationwide or something? Max. Yeah, come out. on, man. But, um, you know, just thinking about the things that they did predict, it's pretty impressive. They predicted flat screen TVs. They, yes. They predicted tablets. Uh-huh. Um, they... Being fired by fax. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best. They on predicted... a dot matrix printer. Probably. Exactly. <laughs> But hey, <laughs> man, you just made me lose my train of thought. Not, there's so, but there's also, so many no, there's, they, one, there's they another one. Uh, picture in picture television. We're not talking about yeah, two channels at the same time. We're video not talking about the most important one here. Okay? The most important one is Google Glass. As this is being released on Wednesday, the Cubs are about to win Game Four. <laughs> you really, really just have too much. They're going to win too Game much Faith, man. Game, win Game Three Tuesday, and then sometime, <laughs> sometime in the next week, the Kansas City Royals are going to change their names to the Miami to Gators. The Miami Gators, of and course. we're all set. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you, there is look we, the sports discussion for one minute. I did predict they would lose the first three of this series. I don't know what's going to happen after that, but it is very. Interesting. The Cubs are still alive as as Back to the Future Day comes up. It is pretty freaky. Well, um, it's, it's pretty cool that like uh, obviously that just that just happened, right? But uh, you the, said that the all the companies and corporations going into the the marketing aspects of things like. We just saw a, a trailer for Jaws 19. Yes. Which, by the way, was such a Great. hilarious trailer. Great. So go out and check it out. A this Nike, time it's personal. Nike, ni- this time it's very personal. Nike in their sh- self-lacing shoes. Um, again, we just mentioned Pepsi Perfect. If you're one of the few that are uh, privileged to pay $20.15 for a pop, Whew. then... Uh, more power to you, but yeah. do not do not <laughs> open that. Do not open that Pepsi, please. Um, <laughs> for the love of God, do not open that no, Pepsi. Keep Actually, you know what? It might even be just empty. They're just like. They're trolling us. <laughs> That'd be great. It's just water in there. It's just water in there. No, no one's gonna open it. It's, it's actually Crystal Pepsi. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which is about the they same as that, being empty. They have that last batch <laughs> yeah. in, the, in the corner. But it's just cool to see like um, culture come together, and and it's funny because I've been seeing memes for years that this is the day. This is the day. It was 2013, and then it was 2014. Yeah, nobody took the time no, to look. Um, it was, <laughs> no one actually went back and watched the movie and realized that it was 2015. <laughs> 2015. Um, we are here now. Um, but uh, the the one performance I got to talk about a little bit more is, is Biff's in this because he really carries this movie. For oh me. yeah. Um, you know all the different aspects and and the ways that he presents himself. I love him as a decrepit old man. Oh and yeah, he plays that so well. And think about the amount of makeup that he needed for that, uh, and to be able to get into that character. Um, the, oh yeah, that gr- gruff old grandpa that's <laughs> sitting on the bench reading a newspaper. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, the sports almanac shows up, and he grabs it, um, and then makes a, a life for himself when when they come back into the future. So I, I really enjoy his performance in this um, more than just about anybody that's in the film. Oh yeah, and of course one of my favorite lines of part two is where Marty is of course uh, impersonating his you know his future son and he's of course running around on the hoverboard trying to escape uh, Biff and his band of bullies again and old Biff is just sitting there and he's like something about this seems so familiar you know. Like, it's just fantastic because yes it is a rehab but because we're in the future, because we're changing so many things, it, it like it doesn't feel like you're ripping us off. It feels like this is something completely new I've never seen before, and it's amazing when a film can do that. Yeah. And you know, no, please, yeah, no, I was gonna, I was agreeing with you. And the other thing too with that is, I think it's the first film that, I, and more films have done it since 
since then, obviously, but the first film to actually go back and kind of play in its own continuity. Yeah. So we see the end of the movie where he goes back to 1955 and, and encounters himself. Yeah, and uh, and we get all those scenes from the first and movie. Going back to the whole like, there's so many little things you catch in the second one. Biff is spiking the uh, ju- the yeah, juice, the, the dance, yeah, the punch, and that's the same punch that uh, Marty's dad drinks in part one before he goes out and tanks. <laughs> yeah, Biff. exactly. So you know he had a little bit of liquid courage. Yeah, he got some liquid <laughs> courage going there. But you know, like when they go to the future, um, the the kind of offshoot 1985 with Biff as the Don with the hashtag Donald Trump Biff Mad Max um, 1985 yeah exactly uh, you know Hell Valley um, it's, <laughs> it's very interesting because you know like again we get all those we, we once again get awkward scenes with Marty and his mom this time because she's got these boobs just coming out of all over the place you made me get these yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's just like the same scene in a different context, and it's just—it's all of that great stuff. Like Zemeckis and the screenwriters just figured out a great way to just kind of rehash everything they just did, but do it in a way that's so new and so unique that we don't feel like, oh God, you know, kind of like how Mac felt when we saw Star Trek Into Darkness, like, oh, they're ripping off, you know, Wrath of Khan. How Mac and stuff. Scott felt. I was shouting true, at the screen. True, true, true. But, but you know, like this is essentially <laughs> the same thing, but because we're just tweaking it just a little bit, mm-hmm. it just feels new and it feels fun. Yes. And I thought that. the introduction of the sports almanac was genius. Because oh, great. if you want to actually go make some money, how are you going to do that? Well, that you're going to Math. use a sports... Uh, <laughs> As Walter White has taught us. No kidding. <laughs> you want to confess something here, Scott? <laughs> no. I'm quite okay. Well, uh, <laughs> that was awkward. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, but if you want to make some money, go bet on sports. Because mm-hmm. you could... Make it seem as though you're just you're got not. some hunches. You yeah. just got some hunches. I'm up and ten then... bucks on FanDuel right now. There you go. There you go. <laughs> hey, that's perfect. The Fed's investigating that. <laughs> yes. See, we, we need some advertisers. FanDuel and DraftKings. FanDuel, they're, DraftKings. You guys they're, are everywhere. They're they're. they're Commercials are like every six seconds. Exactly. So, I mean, Type in punt. obviously yes. <laughs> Type in we're desperate. Uh, no, but you're right. Like the sports almanac is so great because then it gives us something to like be after. Because of course Marty cannot leave alternate 1955 it's a cool until he gets that almanac back, and it's just it's great. And then we of course get all the way to the back, you know. Well, and as the as the science nerd too. It actually follows a lot of theory that continues to this day with the tangent universe and the fact that uh-huh. there isn't one line. It's every time some de- some decision is made, another parallel universe is made, mm-hmm. which, yes, is what they used for Star Trek 2009. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's exactly. the exact same thing. And I thought that was genius in that film, too. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it's cool. That tunnel scene is so cool. I mean, I, I know I'm skipping ahead to what my favorite scene is, oh, but no. I, love, I love that tunnel scene of them chasing each other in those old cars and uh-huh. just uh, trying to get the sports almanac. I absolutely love that scene. Land and on him! It was like 10 of course, you know, it all does end well enough, but, you know, well, let's, we can go to our favorite scenes now, and we can keep talking about it, though, but, sure. so that's your favorite scene where they're, uh, you know, he's that in the car. That entire chase scene, and it's, it's so good, and, like, um, just seeing everybody, I, 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 just seeing the way that they acted that out, and mm-hmm. obviously they weren't using any kind of doubles or anything like that, I mean, I'm sure that it wasn't nearly as dangerous as it looks, but yeah. um, you're still getting to see uh, just them putting their all into it in their yep. 1955 self in this 2015 movie yep. that actually takes place in 1985. <laughs> I absolutely love this movie. But you know, I, I my favorite scene is probably twofold, and it's a tie. One, I love the scene where uh, alternate 1985, where Biff and Marty are talking in the office, and he's explaining, you know, how he got the almanac and all that kind of stuff. And I, I just love the interplay there because all the time in Biff's mind, he understands like, oh wait. I told my this old guy told me this. I got you know. There's just like kind of a one of these days, some crazy yeah. little kid, some <laughs> mad-eyed scientist, exactly. <laughs> and there's just like this creepy undercurrent that whole time, but you don't really understand it until that. And then I believe we get to go back to 1955 again, and you get to see that conversation, which mm-hmm. I love. You only get to hear like the beginning of it though. But my real favorite scene is when. Uh, back in 1955 when Doc is talking to Doc mm. and giving him the yes. screwdriver like don't you mean this size screwdriver like yes yes you know all that I just love that because A why don't you just turn around and look at yourself but B like it, I don't know just the way Christopher Lloyd interacts with himself right there and the way those lines are delivered 
it's plausible that he wouldn't be like, oh, this sounds too familiar or something like that. It's just it's just kind of there, and I, I just love how those two play off. He, you know, he plays off himself in you know obvious green screening there. That's mine. What's Scott? What's it your looks like scene? some sort of weather experiment. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> mine is the entire dance scene part two. Oh yeah, I love that. Where too. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where from from the point where Marty realizes I know where the book is to. Uh, we go to the tunnel scene after that uh-huh. because that's where you have all the interactions where it's basically part one, the greatest hits. Yeah, the fact like you know when Marty from part one is playing Johnny Be Good, in the background you have Marty from part two dropping the sandbags on the top of the uh, because they're going to get him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's just like oh that happened because of that. That happened because of that. It's just little. Playing with time and thinking fourth dimensionally, which is just letting me geek out. It's cool to see all those little Easter eggs that they mm-hmm. give you. And uh, what's interesting is that none of us picked any future scenes as our favorite. Because it's scenes. not that good. But I, I disagree. <laughs> I think that I think that the future that they predicted is is very much 1985. And I think that if, yeah. if 1985 would have progressed and that would have still remained the style and everything, that is the only part of this entire trilogy that I think you could claim was dated mm-hmm. because yeah. that's their vision of what 2015, 2015 would have been. been yeah. However, I mean, I still think that it's it's cool to look back and see that. Much like, you know, I, I love going to Tomorrowland and Disney because that's his vision of what the future would have been. Yeah. So I, I, I enjoy seeing... What they are, uh, what they predicted, and what came yeah. right, and what got tor- terribly wrong. Well. <laughs> the predictions are great, and obviously, it's it's fun to see now that we're thirty years ahead. And God, I'm thirty two years old. But uh, <laughs> with that, um, the uh, the thing I have an issue with, the, and I know we're not talking about it, but since I had to defend part three in a minute, I'll knock down part two for a second. Hey, I love part three. Uh, the uh, segue. The the issue I have with part two is. It just kind of is haphazard. You have going up to it, and then 1985 dystopian future and 1955 are great. But 2015, you've got so many bad scenes. Like we can't get Crispin Glover back, so let's get the guy in makeup and turn him upside down. Exactly. And look. And if you, don't, for those of you who don't know, that was it. Crispin Glover did not want to come back unless he got more money. So they said, okay, we'll just put somebody in a mask and say they're you. Um, Mix, let's let's have hey, let's have Michael J. Fox play his kid. Perfect. Let's have him play his daughter, too. What? Yeah, that was weird. What? That, that's a little strange. Yeah. It's just I mean, little stuff like that that just throws me off. I get what they're doing there, but yeah. But as soon as we get back in the DeLorean and go back to 85. Well, sometimes you, I mean, you drink the punch after you made all that money, and you know, you, and get, you, know, you get some decisions made that maybe weren't your finest hour. And you know, you talk about future <laughs> you get a predictions. Lot of yes, man. You talk about future predictions, you know, like how the DeLorean now runs on, you know, biofuel and everything. <laughs> you know, like that's that's coming up. Um, I but, Google Glass. Uh, yeah, like Google the, Glass on that. that Young Marty, or whatever you, what's his name in the future? But uh, he's got the Isn't smart it Marty glasses Jr.? on. I think it is Marty, Marty Jr. Jr. Yeah, yeah. and but, Marlene is the daughter. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, like I, lo- I would love to hydrate a pizza. Um, that would be awesome. And I want <laughs> Flea to be the boss that fires me. There you go. <laughs> But it's interesting, the film, you know, the future scenes, obviously those kind of exist just to give us a parallel of what happened in the first movie in that exact same setting, you know, with hoverboards this time. And of course, who didn't want a hoverboard when you first saw part two? Um, But you're right, let's transition to part three, because of course part two ends with Marty getting back in the DeLorean, but uh, Doc ends up going... Well, no, and Marty doesn't get back back in the DeLorean. No, yes, part two. Okay, I'm sorry. No, 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 transition us. Part two ends with Doc in the air trying to pick up Marty after everything is okay after the tunnel scene. Right. Yes. Gets struck by lightning. And getting the letter. Yes. Well, the letter comes after. Gets struck by lightning and Doc goes flying. And then the letter arrives in part three. No, part two, I'm sorry. No, part it's two. the part two, yeah. It arrives in part two, and it's dated from Doc saying, if you find this, blah, 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 the DeLorean is in a mine yeah. shaft. Yeah, I hit it here because, yeah. of course, he's back in 1885. Mm-hmm. What, um, what do they say? They've, they've had that letter for 90 years. Yeah, yeah. yeah the was like, a, we, we didn't think he'd actually yeah, be here. No, something like, like that. 70 years because it's 1885. Yes. Right? Yeah, yes. yeah. And he said, looks like I won a, uh, I lost the bet. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, you know, and you see, like, of course, part two ends with a pseudo trailer for part three. Yes, yes. Um, which is, you know the Captain America: The First Avenger borrowed from by giving yeah, us some oh, Avenger scenes, so. and we definitely get it to be continued. Yes, yes, we definitely do. And you know, part three, I, I've always, and I'm like you, I honestly, I go two, three, one in my mind. 
Really? Because I really okay. like part three. See, I, I go I go two, one, three, but what I will say about part three is if one is Marty's movie and two is Biff's movie in oh, my yes. mind, three, then is, three is Doc's definitely movie. Definitely Doc's Absolutely. movie. Absolutely. And you Doc's just hit on one of the reasons why I love it. Because you love Christopher Lloyd in that part, right? And, and, and I claim nostalgia because it's the first one I remember seeing in the theater. 1992. I, I remember that. the yeah. Burger King. I was seven years um, old and it was YM, YMCA was. Safari Club. <laughs> Hell yeah! We went to a movie that day. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, you know, part three. Obviously, we're going back to the old west. And honestly, like, look, I'm a guy that loves westerns and everything. So if you're gonna take this franchise, I love back to a western. I'm all on board. And you're right. Like, three is definitely Doc's movie. He yes. gets so many great scenes that he gets to do. He's been there a while, so of course, the very first time we see him is just that badass shot where he's shooting Marty the noose around Marty's neck so that he drops down. Which like, almost killed Michael J. Fox, by the way. Yes, if you don't know, <laughs> Michael J. Fox almost died from that. Um, but you know, it's just like Doc looks so at, like at home in that type of environment, you know. And I know he's been there a while and everything when Marty gets back to him, but. It's just so cool, like how once again we have to go back, and I believe there's even more of that, like that scene. You know, we do it with horses this time. Yeah, well, you know, like the scene around the town square and everything. And we're skipping a little bit too, because there's some interaction between Marty and Doc in 1955. Yeah, where 55 he, Doc, where he actually yeah, hits his head. That is a great on opening. the toilet, so that causes the flux capacitor. It's all connected. And what's, <laughs> what I love about the what I love about the third one at the beginning too. You know, we get that great scene with the flame, the flame wheel, like the trail and everything. Doc's looking there all accomplished and then bloom, and Marty comes out of the side again and Doc has to turn around and be like what, 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 what I just sent you back to we just sent you back <laughs> damn it like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm back, back I'm back from, back from the future which actually I'm so, that is part two <laughs> Yeah, that, that one is, is the end of part two. I forgot about that. And it's so fantastic, though, because then, yeah, we get that interaction where, once again, okay, we got to get the DeLorean back up to speed again and get, and get you all the way back to there's 1885. An, there's another great scene where he dresses up Marty like what a 1955 guy would think a cowboy is. A cowboy is. would be. So he's got the suede <laughs> and the pink. And... He's he's in the they're in the the uh, drive-in movie theater and there's Indians on the drive-in. And he's like, well, what about the Indians? Oh, they'll be gone. Don't worry, they'll be gone. Yeah. And then, what do you run into when you hit eighty-five? Indians. Indians. <laughs> <laughs> And you're right. It's like it's fantastic, and you know what, the western scenes are like. I, I think they're really entertaining. You know, I like love the, Irish Marty McFly. Exactly. Which, by the way, was supposed to be Crispin Glover. Was really? it? It was written for Crispin Glover. But he, what, the, two, the, the stuff with two leaves well, sour taste? Yeah, well, no, actually, uh, if we we're going to go into that story real quick, part one, Crispin didn't like it because it was too capitalistic, because at the end they win because they're rich. Yeah. He didn't like that. He also wanted more money for part two, but we won't go into that. <laughs> Isn't and that, so, like, hypocritical? Well, no, yes, no, yes. That's, well, I think everybody go got a raise, so, but him, well, here's the fun part. This is go. the best part. He goes to Semeckis, so his, uh, his uh, manager goes to Semeckis, uh, and uh, says, um, everyone's getting a raise except for my guy. Exactly. And so Semeckis says, here, I'll, I'll give you a new deal. And he gave him less money than he did the first <laughs> time. So Glover's oh, gone at that point. But yeah. it was all the both scripts were written, so that was supposed to be Crispin Glover playing the dead. Nice. Well, you know, and, but you're right. Like, we get that. We get, Good of course, pull. um... Oh, God, I can never remember her name. Uh... The lady Thompson. love of Doc Doc Brown. Oh, uh, um, uh, Mary Steenburgen. Mary Steenburgen. Yes, yeah, like I am beating him tonight. This he is, is awesome. <laughs> I was gonna. Say, well, Sarah and I just watched Robin Hood: Prince of Thieves today, of course, which we will be doing a flashback on. Um, Hell but, yes. Uh, I was Great thinking. Of, I was thinking of Mary Elizabeth Mastrantonio for some reason. Not, um, not even close. Not even close. <laughs> one's well, Mary, not, one's I guess. Not. Yeah. That's <laughs> no, but you know, like the, the interactions that Doc is. I love that they give Doc a love story, and it's not just a ticky tack. Oh, somebody loves Doc. It's literally like a put out their developed yeah, love, like story. An, aw, love yeah, story. It really is. And you know, like the, the the whole scene, like I think the dance is one of my favorite scenes, like the town dance where, you know, Marty goes and shows his like shooting skills. Like uh, what did he say? Was Which it, was played up in part two with, yes, the, with, yes. what did he say with Elijah it? Wood. <laughs> yes, it was Elijah Wood. Oh, you're right. Great back to the future cameo, but and he also it? he also invents the frisbee that night. Does, yes, he does. <laughs> what, what does he say uh, when he shoots out on the targets? He says, "Like, where'd you learn to shoot like that?" I can't remember what he says. What game he plays? 
Uh, yeah, I don't think he refer- references the game. Oh man, now I'm now I'm feeling bad. I yeah, it's this. something like that. But I've seen this all you so people many listening times. to it on on here just Craig's right. Know. Everyone's shouting at us right now. Yeah, you hey, idiots! You idiots! How do you not know this? Um, but you know, like the, the dance is just great because we get all those convergence of things, and you know, we get you know ZZ nice Top, ZZ Top there, of course. And but you're right, like again, but let, let's call out Thomas F. Wilson a little bit here too, yes. because we already mentioned a little bit. But Mad Dog Tannen's a great villain, and it, it's you can once again you can see how Biff's family turns into this from this guy because it's just subtle little things that he does. I do my killing after breakfast or before breakfast. Well, I do my killing after breakfast. <laughs> It's so great. And, of course, when he tells everybody his name is, uh, what, Clint Eastwood? Yeah. Yeah. He does, when they, Clint. Clint. Clint, Clint Eastwood. Eastwood. <laughs> Wait, did you just gesture at our six beer cans? I'm just amazed you guys have down six beers. I'm, I'm just saying, man. <laughs> it goes down smooth. <laughs> no, go get that Guinness Nitro. <laughs> That's right. Sponsor. Uh, no, but, you know, like, yeah, like, I, I love it at the very end where, you know, of course, the duel is about to happen and everything. And, like, Marty, Mc, Marty doesn't want to go out there. And, like, everybody will say Clint Eastwood. Woods a sissy, you know, like all that kind of stuff. It's just, it's just great little interactions like that. But I'm course, keeping the gun if you die. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like the, the, the number three gets like crapped on a lot. It really does uh, by by common, you know, the the more commonplace fans of the franchise. As a three one two guy, I think it's great. Yeah, and I think it is too because I don't think it feels out of place. I don't think because you're right. If you look at it as a trilogy of each character gets their own movie. Like this is this is kind of what it is because I would I don't think I'm out of out of line saying Biff Marty Doc we've already said it but I think it's true those are the three characters of Back to the Future oh, yes yeah. George and Lorraine are there yes Jennifer's there but they're but supporting Jennifer characters. is so not Jennifer is so not there but she is out cold until the very very exactly night. but you know like and then, then some kid gives her a lewd gesture on a train but yeah <laughs> but you know but like the whole trilogy is those three characters' story I think and you know giving Doc this trilogy and of course I loved the stuff with the train. And how they had to get the get it up to speed with the train, and how the train yeah, turns into the time machine. Basically, puts NOS in it. Yeah, it's yeah, it, it's, it's fantastic, <laughs> and you know all of it. Like three, I, you know, it's entertaining to me still, and it's a good way to end the trilogy. I think. Mm-hmm. Well, I think the, if we're going to talk about favorite scenes. The yeah. train climax makes that movie. Oh, yeah. Because it's about 20 minutes, and there's so much going on with it. Is it going to get up to speed? Is it going to blow up beforehand? What's going on with Clara? And, of course, we get those great, like, Western throwbacks where they have to be on the side of the train trying to, trying the to fix it and everything. Yes, yeah, yes. like, it's, there's so many great Western throwbacks there. Like, the we get the, uh, you know, shooting at the feet to make them dance type thing. Like, those are in all those old Western movies. Mm-hmm. Like, Zemeckis really did his homework on that kind of stuff. And you could tell he's a fan of the Western uh, when he show this film Craig what do you think of part 3 I think that the, my well my favorite I, scene yeah. yeah I loved it but my favorite scene would be the this seems cheesy but the end where Doc is like I'm still gonna be out there yeah I'm still exactly. going because I, I think of like you know they're rebooting Ghostbusters they're rebooting everything from the 80s and the 90s because now all of us that watch that as kids have money it's so actually pretty now smart they're, <laughs> they're starting to reboot all that I you know, I don't know if I want to reboot, but it's just cool to think that Doc Brown's out there. Yeah. Well, you won't get one because Zemeckis is actually putting his contract. I kid you not, it's in his contract until he dies. Yeah. No one can make, remake this movie. Well, he's not immortal. Well, so. <laughs> but there were it's rumors. Zemeckis. Maybe he is. There were rumors a few. Ooh, I want to say like almost a year ago that you know they were going to redo this, reboot this with Justin Bieber as Marty McFly. Was that like clickbait rumors? Yeah. No, no, like, no, 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 no. According check, to BuzzFeed, you can check Hollywood Babylon. They reference this story. It was actually, according to BuzzFeed and Hollywood Babylon. It was oh, great right. to be there. <laughs> so, no, so I remember this. I don't story know if I'd use Kevin Smith and Ralph Garman as a source. <laughs> I would definitely feel like use in a them college as a paper that would, that would <laughs> as a proud member like of the Garvey Wikipedia. Yeah, no, like but no, I remember <laughs> reading. The, I remember reading the reports. Like, oh, they're developing a Back to the Future reboot with Justin Bieber. I'm like. It's never going to happen because I remember that clause that Zemeckis put in his yeah. contract. Like, no, no, no. He, it's he not literally happening. has an ironclad clause. Yeah. It's like, until I'm dead, you guys can't touch this. Well, no, and you know, we can, <laughs> we can actually transition that into like a, a thing about the whole trilogy here because I don't think this trilogy, like I said at the very beginning, it holds up. And still, it's 30 years later. 
and it still is is you know not it doesn't look dated it doesn't feel dated it's still as entertaining as ever and it's just because the idea is sound you know like the the idea behind this movie and the adventure they go on is just fantastic by the way i have neglected to say this the whole time but i i want to give a big thank you and a shout out to brian spear because without brian spear this movie doesn't happen he was born on october 21st 1985 yep. and i want to uh make sure that that brian knows thank you for yes. all this I mean, without, without him that day doesn't exist right exactly uh, I'm confused. Okay. <laughs> I'm lost, guys. They, I'm they, sorry. Just, they just don't get it. No, no, no. Um, you know, the, the trilogy as a whole is, I would dare say it's up. I, you see, honestly, like, it, it, and people think of this one as more acclaimed, but I put it right up there with the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Well, I think. that's the thing. I've been thinking all day about, like, the how we're going to do the rating system for this, and I kind of want to rate it based off other trilogies. Mm-hmm. So where would you put this in the line of, let's say, the five great trilogies would be, what obviously Star Wars. Let's say Star Wars, uh, the first the, trilogy. The initial... Star Trek two, three, and four. You know, no. go back. And <laughs> I, I Star know Trek two is pretty legit. Um, two, three, and four are a trilogy. I was, I was, I was thinking say, more like Star Wars, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, Lord Godfather. Of the Rings. Yeah, Godfather. Um, obviously, Back to the Future. That's the whole point. Back of this to the discussion. Future. And if we had to put one more. Uh, if you say Matrix, I'm gonna punch you. In the no, face. no, 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 no. <laughs> Honestly, I would put I would put the first Spider-Man trilogy up there, even though three was awful. But like uh, the first two are great. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of other trilogies though, like because everything's a, like a quadrilogy or an octrilogy now. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but okay. Well, then go I would. With those if, four, if you're gonna play that game, Indiana Jones the first three. There you go. That's the three, or, or that's the five right there. Well, okay, Lord's Kingdom of the we'll Crystal Crap. Well, yes, that one doesn't exist. Uh, <laughs> so we'll go Indiana Jones. Uh, Back to the Future, Lord of the Rings, Godfather, and uh, crap, I'm blanking. Star on Trek Two, Star or no Star Wars, <laughs> the original Star Wars. Okay, we're definitely we're, not we're, Star we're, Trek. We're, two, one of these days we're going to do flashbacks to <laughs> Star Trek, gentlemen, and you're going to have fun. No, but that's a good idea. So where, <laughs> no, where would you do, rank that? When we do the Star Trek uh, flashbacks, we should do them all in a row. All like starting at 8 p.m. and just drink until we get to the number six. I am in. Can we get? Can we really in. quickly get to the one where they meet God? Because I have a lot of issues That's with five. That one. Number five. <laughs> Everyone has anyway, issues with five. Um, I would say, yeah, I would, but if we're five. putting those five, yeah. I would put it as number two behind Star Wars um, because. I, I like Lord of the Rings. I thought number one was a lot of walking, um, but you know that's that's just me. That not a fan of the books necessarily, but uh, th- just the fact that it it's so put together and they thought about it like they thought about the little things that happened in one that that mm-hmm. would happen again in two and that happened all because of three. I I just. It's so timeless. Oh, yeah. you, you get to go back and watch these movies 30 years later, and it's just like you're watching them for the first time, and you're developing these characters for the first time. You really feel an affinity to these characters, oh, which yeah. is why when the Cubs get to the World Series, <laughs> I absolutely want Keep Doc Brown. Faith, man. I want Doc Brown to throw out the first pitch, which is what that he's would be pretty him. awesome if they he's, had like starting, Fox and Lloyd. Trying, like, he's starting throwing. to get a well, no, he's starting to get a a, a big following. Christopher Lloyd said. He'd want to throw out the first pitch. Ooh, the that would series. be really cool. I, I think it? they should do it on Game Three, man. They should do it. Well, they won in four. Maybe they have by the time you're listening to this. <laughs> yeah, technically um, they won in five. There if was you a go, five? If you go back, they say the Cubs win in in a sweep of five games. So they they expanded it. They expanded They expanded the games. series, but didn't move it in November. Well, they exactly. expanded the series <laughs> and they expanded the teams to Miami. Which Apparently. hey, they got a they got a team <laughs> in the National League though. That's Steals, steals so, money from the public. Anyway, um, so, what, what, do you, what would you okay, rank it on this ranking trilogy? Ranking the trilogies, um, as, as you kind of gathered from the Hook uh, podcast and some other ramblings, I am an 80s kid, so I, I, I love Star Wars. It's I just had my daughter watch it for the first time. We're still on Return of the Jedi. We're halfway through. She will not watch the other ones, by the way. Three, four, and five. We're good. <laughs> um, but my favorite trilogy of all time is Indiana Jones. Mm-hmm. Which is why I threw it out there, and this would be second. Yeah, and I would, I, I would agree with that. You know, like it's, it's. I, I think I would. Oh man, it's really hard for me to, you know, get get past the Lord of the Rings as a trilogy. You know, because 
I think that the way that that was put together, you know, how they filmed it all in one, you know, like one continuous two year span and all that. I think the continuity is great there, but I would without wearing shoes. You know, honestly, as big as this, Peter Jackson not wear shoes or something. <laughs> no, he was Oscars. a total hobby. Okay. Yeah, all right. But I think that as uh, as much as I love the Lord of the Rings, I would put this as probably number two, and I'd put Star Wars number three, because as big as a Star Wars fan as I am, I think that, you know, the problem with all of the the rest of those trilogies, Godfather part, the Godfather trilogy has part three to deal with, which is just truly awful. Um, you know, Lord of the Rings, all of them are fine and solid, that's why they're my number one trilogy, but Star Wars, you know... A lot know, of walking in that number one. And a lot of we'll walking in it. number one, but of course we have, you know, Sean Bean, or as my wife says, Seen Bean, uh, dying as he does in every film, but um, you know, I, put, fired. I would like you. I'd put this as the number two trilogy of all time because you're, the, the attention to the continuity of these films is amazing. And it's just fun. I mean, it, it's one of those films that you can go back and you can show to uh, little ones like Anastasia, who's been in the room this whole time. <laughs> with if her. you've been uh, you know, <laughs> it, it's, it's a really fun trilogy um, and it's just relevant to today. Uh, it doesn't have that mark of being an 80s movie or anything like that. That or an early '90s movie. It's just a fantastic trilogy, yeah. and uh, good on them to be able to make a great first film, which led them to be able to do two and three. Oh yeah, and I and you're right. Like I echo those sentiments. If you have not seen the Back to the Future trilogy, you're really missing out. I mean, you're really missing out on something amazing because. It's not an '80s film. It's not a. It's not an '80s, '89, '90 film. It's it's literally a film for all time. I mean, this could easily be an episode of Front Row Classics. I mean, because the, in about 30, 40 years, this is going to be one of those benchmark films that everyone remembers, and all three of them actually. Um, you know, I think I think that the more the further away we get from Back to the Future, the more we're going to appreciate it. Uh, in my mind. Um, but anyway, everyone, I hope that you have enjoyed this uh, front row flashback on Back to the Future, the trilogy. Um, I'm hoping you are enjoying your Back to the Future day as you're listening to this right now. Um, <laughs> and if you're listening to it in 2016, sorry. Yeah, sorry about <laughs> you. Um, but, you know, of course, uh, there's plenty of opportunities for you to connect with us. As Craig mentioned at the beginning, uh, the Facebook, or uh, <laughs> Facebook, the search for The Front Row Movie Reviews. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, maybe a question you'd like us to answer on our an episode of Front Row News, please email us at thefrontrowmoviereviews at gmail.com. If you want to follow us on Twitter, Front Row Reviews with a Z at the end. Yes, hashtag bring back the Z. Um, uh, hashtag Donald Trump Biff. Hashtag Donald Trump Biff. And uh, you, know, you can follow us there uh, at, the, at Front Row Reviews with a Z. Um, also, we are now on Instagram. Search for The Front Row Movie Reviews. And our website is coming. I promise you. There's going to be a lot of good content on it. Um, but uh, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed Full Disclosure uh, here on Back to the Future Day of Back to the Future the Trilogy. I am Jeremy Geckner. I am Craig McFarland. Is it Rose? Rose? Where we're going. Where we're going. We don't need Rose. We don't need Rose. That is right. <laughs> that is Anastasia McFarland. Who are you, my man? I am Scott McFarland, the proud daddy. That is right. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, as always, we will see you in the front row. <laughs> <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs>